the silence was the first to be broken. Not with a scream, but with a distant whisper, a growing buzz, filling the air with an anomalous vibration. No one knew what it was, where it came from, or what it meant. Only it wasn't normal. The morning. Routine of millions of people was suddenly interrupted by this anomaly of sound, a harbinger of something that would defy all human logic and understanding. Then they appeared, not from the ground, not from the depths of the earth, but from the sky. Small dark dots on the horizon that quickly loomed, revealing shapes that the human mind refused to process. They were spiders, spiders of a size that defied imagination. With wingspans that rivaled that of a small airplane, their long, segmented legs moving with terrifying grace against the blue of the sky. The buzzing sound was now the beating of their membranous wings, a sound that echoed the panic that was beginning to spread. The initial shock was paralyzing. People on the streets, in their cars, in their offices, looked up at the sky. There, expressions varying from shock to disbelief to sheer terror. There was no precedent for this. Spiders flying, and bigger than birds. The phrase, which had once sounded like a cheap science fiction delusion, was now a brutal reality, hanging over their heads, casting gigantic shadows over the cities that had once felt so safe. The mystery of their origin was as terrifying as their presence. Where did they come from? How did they evolve into such a form? And most importantly, what was their purpose? The questions echoed in everyone's minds with no answers, only the certainty that the world as they knew it had changed forever. The threat was not just physical, it was existential, shaking the foundations of human understanding of nature and our place in it. The first reports were confusing, fragmented, mixing panic with denial, but the images captured by cell phones and security cameras did not lie. Giant spiders with bodies that shone with an iridescent exoskeleton hovered over skyscrapers, their webs, thick as steel cables, thrown with frightening precision, trapping helicopters and even small planes that dared to approach. The sky, previously the domain of birds and aircraft, now belonged to them. The biology behind this terror was a fascinating and horrifying enigma. How could such massive creatures defy gravity? The answer, for the few scientists who managed to maintain their sanity amidst the chaos, lay in a combination of evolutionary factors and, perhaps, an unprecedented mutation. Their wings, thin and translucent, were a marvel of natural engineering, capable of generating the necessary lift for their imposing bodies. They were not insect wings, nor bird wings, but something entirely new, pulsing with an unknown energy. Initial observations revealed that these spiders did not fly like birds, with powerful rhythmic flaps. Instead, they appeared to glide, riding, invisible air currents with subtle movements of their wings that resembled the navigation of a glider more than the flight of a winged creature. The similarity to the ballooning, a phenomenon already known in smaller spiders, was undeniable, but amplified to a monstrous scale. They released filaments of incredibly light and resistant silk, which, when carried by the wind, lifted them, allowing them to navigate the skies with frightening efficiency. The difference was that, for them, the balloon was a complex, almost living structure that adapted to the currents, allowing maneuvers that defied human comprehension. Their bodies were a fusion of chitin and something else, a substance, that reflected light in strange ways, giving them an almost ethereal appearance despite their colossal size. Their eyes, multiple and faceted, captured every detail of the environment below, making them relentless predators. Their fangs, sharp as razors, were capable of piercing metal, and the venom they carried, although not yet fully understood, was feared for its devastating potency. The web, once a tool for hunting and locomotion, became a siege weapon, capable of immobilizing entire structures. The global impact was immediate and catastrophic. Air traffic ground to a halt, airports were abandoned, planes were stranded, and trade routes connecting continents were cut. The world economy collapsed, not from a lack of resources, but from an inability to transport them. Cities, once hubs of activity and progress, became spider traps, their giant shadows covering entire city blocks, a constant reminder of the new world order. Entire ecosystems were decimated. The food chain, carefully balanced over millennia, 
was brutally redefined. Birds, once the masters of the skies, became easy prey. Large mammals, defenseless against aerial attack, were hunted and ensnared in webs, their bodies hung like macabre trophies. Nature, at its core, had been turned upside down, and humanity, which had considered itself at the top of the pyramid, now found itself in a precarious position, fighting for its very existence. Widespread panic swept the planet. Communications, networks, overwhelmed by reports of sightings and attacks, collapsed. Governments tried to impose order, but the scale of the threat was unprecedented. Millions of people sought refuge, abandoning their homes and cities, creating a mass exodus that overwhelmed all infrastructure. Hope, once a beacon, was now a flickering flame, threatened to be extinguished at any moment. The fight for survival began in disorganized fashion, with desperate attempts at defense. Armies were mobilized, but their weapons designed to combat. Conventional ground or air threats were ineffective against the spiders. Missiles and bullets bounced off their exoskeletons or passed harmlessly through their translucent wings. The creature's speed and agility, combined with their ability to launch webs over long distances, made them nearly invincible adversaries. Scientists and engineers, working in precarious conditions, desperately tried to understand the creatures, searching for a weakness, a vulnerable spot that could be exploited. Every piece of information was valuable, every observation, no matter how insignificant, could be the key to salvation. Human resilience, tested to its limits, began to manifest itself in small victories, in acts of individual courage and in collaborative efforts that transcended borders and rivalries. New strategies for combat began to emerge. This was no longer a war of brute force, but of intelligence and adaptation. Sonic weapons were developed to disrupt spiders' navigation. Small, agile drones were equipped with laser cutters to cut through their webs. And in some places, humanity began to learn to use the environment to its advantage, creating traps and ambushes, exploiting the spiders' very nature against them. The sacrifices were immense. Cities were lost, lives were taken, and the landscape of the planet was forever changed. But amidst the devastation, a new form of society began to emerge, a society united by adversity, where cooperation and innovation were the only currencies of exchange. Humanity, forced to adapt, began to transform, to become stronger, more resilient, more aware of its own fragility and, paradoxically, of its immense capacity for overcoming. The climax approached not as a final battle, but as a series of decisive clashes. There was no guarantee of victory, only the certainty that the fight would continue. Humanity had been pushed to the brink, but as it stared into the void, it found not despair, but new determination. The flying spiders, larger than birds, had come to redefine the world, and the question was no longer whether humanity would survive, but how it would adapt and, ultimately, how it would rise again in a world forever marked by the shadows of its new masters in the sky. The initial terror gave way to constant vigilance. Every shadow in the sky, every distant hum, was a reminder of the creature's omnipresent presence. The cities, once vibrant and full of life, were now labyrinths of silence and caution, with the few survivors moving stealthily, ever alert to the skies. Life underground became a necessity, with bunkers and tunnels serving as refuges from winged predators. Sunlight, once a symbol of hope, now brought with it danger revealing the menacing silhouettes that patrolled the sky. Communication, though poor, was vital. Small resistance groups scattered across the globe exchanged information about the spiders' flight patterns, their hunting tactics, and, most importantly, the rare instances of successful defense. Each victory, no matter how small, was celebrated as a triumph, a breath of hope in a world dominated by fear. The solidarity among the survivors was the only thing that held them together, the belief that together they could find a way to reverse their fate. Scientists in their makeshift laboratories worked tirelessly. Analysis of the spider's venom revealed a surprising complexity, with components that affected not only the nervous system but also the cellular structure of the victims. The search for an antidote or a way to neutralize its effects became a top priority. 
At the same time, reverse engineering of web fragments revealed unprecedented strength and elasticity, leading to new discoveries in materials that could one day be used for human defense. The adaptive nature of spiders was a constant challenge. They seemed to learn from each encounter, adjusting their tactics and developing new ways to overcome human defenses. This forced humanity into a desperate arms race, where innovation was the only chance for survival. With each new weapon or strategy developed, spiders responded with a countermeasure, turning the fight into a deadly game of chess, where every move could mean annihilation. 